I'm Judy Puckett. I'm the Director of Women's Ministries for Chapelgate Church. Welcome to this week's video devotional. So we're about a month in to this coronavirus quarantine. And I have to admit that there's been parts of this that I've really enjoyed. I've enjoyed a break from an overcommitted crazy schedule. And I've enjoyed spending extra time with my family. But there have been parts of it that have been pretty tough too. One of the things that's been really hard is that I've come face to face with a lot of my weaknesses, and I hate that. Now, weakness looks different for different people. For some of us, we feel weak because we're trying to work part-time or full-time from home now. We're now homeschooling our children in addition to the regular demands of keeping a house and keeping up with the family. And we're trying to check in on our friends and our neighbors and our relatives, and it's too much. There's too many balls in the air and we don't feel qualified to be handling them all. And we feel weak. Some of us feel weak for an opposite reason. We're kind of feeling unmotivated. We have more time than ever to do the things that we want to do and need to do, but we find ourselves feeling maybe a little bit lazier. We eat more and we eat more often and we've stopped exercising. And all those projects that we said, if only I had more time, would get done have remained untouched and we feel weak. Some of us feel weak because we're lonely. It's hard to be isolated from our coworkers and our friends and our family and our church. We don't want to be alone anymore. Maybe we live alone or maybe we live in a house where the relationships in our home are far from easy and there seems to be no reprieve from the stress of the relational tension we experience. We don't want to sit alone or cry alone or pray alone or be alone anymore. And we feel weak. Some of us feel weak because we're really struggling with anxiety. And this season of uncertainty has only made it worse. We don't want to struggle with these things. And we know that sometimes they don't make sense logically, but that's not how anxiety works. We're fearful because we don't know when this is going to end and we don't know if we'll keep our job or we've lost our job and we don't know how we're going to make it. Or we think about what the condition of our health might be like in a couple of weeks and the anxiety, it mounts and we feel weak. So what does the Bible say about weakness? Well, in 2 Corinthians, Paul talks a little bit about his own weaknesses he talks about this thorn in the flesh that he has. Now, we don't know exactly what that thorn is, but we do know that Paul asked three times for the Lord to take it away, and the Lord said no. Let's take a look at these verses from 2 Corinthians chapter 12, beginning in verse 8. Three times I pleaded with the Lord about this, that it should lead me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. For the sake of Christ, then, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities. For when I am weak, then I am strong. So first of all, we learn from this text that God invites us to admit our weaknesses to ourselves, to him, and to others. I'm not sure why, but this is really hard for us to do sometimes. But I am weak, and you are weak, and God knows it, and so does everyone else. One of my favorite scriptures in the whole Bible is Psalm 4017, and it says this, As for me, I am poor and needy, but the Lord takes thought for me. You are my help and my deliverer. Do not delay, O oh my God. And I love this verse because it beautifully expresses how I feel, poor and needy. And yet the hope in this verse is that it says, the Lord takes thought of me. I'm on his mind. And so are you. So the scriptures invite us, God invites us to confess and to admit our weakness. And secondly, we see that God invites us to ask him to take it away. Paul pleaded with the Lord three times to take away this thorn in his flesh. And in Philippians 4, 6, Paul says again, do not be anxious about anything. But in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. God encourages us to ask. But the truth is that sometimes it's not God's will to take away our weaknesses. And it can be frustrating. And it can make us angry. 
And the truth is we just need to admit that. God already knows it. It's not for his benefit that we admit it, but for ours. So what's the hope when we've asked God to help us with our weakness and to take it away? Well, Paul tells us in those moments, God whispers, my grace is sufficient for you. My power is made perfect in weakness. In our moments of weakness, he is enough. His grace is enough. I really struggle sometimes with anxiety and it stems from issues of claustrophobia and repeated cases of bronchitis. And what began years ago as isolated moments of anxiety, either when I was on an elevator or on the plane, has grown over the years to be panic attacks that seem to come on without warning and without trigger. And at times I can feel really paralyzed by fear and I absolutely hate it. I don't wanna be weak. I don't wanna struggle with this weakness. And I've prayed and I've asked the Lord to take it away. In fact, I do every day, but he hasn't. He hasn't taken it away. And as I thought about that, I thought, you know, but I am kind of thankful for it because this struggle, it keeps me really close to him. I need him now more than ever. I am desperate for his strength. I can't do it without him. And he has been good to me. He's met me with his presence and his peace and they're precious to me. And the truth is that I've come to know his grace in my weakness in a way that I could never know it if I had been strong. His power is made perfect in my weakness. So I, like Paul, will boast too. Girls, I'm weak. I'm really, really weak. And I struggle. And I'm desperate for him. So if you're feeling weak today, if you're feeling overwhelmed or anxious or lonely or unmotivated, you're just feeling weak, I just want to say to you, me too. Me too. But I also want to say, girls, he's strong. He's so, so strong. And he promises to meet us in our weakness and to exchange his power and his strength for our weakness. And this is really good news to a weak and desperate heart like mine. Let's pray. God, thank you that your grace is sufficient and that you delight to take our weakness and give us your strength. We're desperate for you, God. We need you. And we're thankful that you are faithful and that you meet us where we are. Continue to strengthen us with your power in our weakness. In Jesus' name, amen.